All right. So what we're looking at is um, the derivative of an inverse function. And it's not as bad as it sounds, but it can be if we don't understand what's going on. So if you are given the information that f and g are inverse functions, okay, you could be given some information about f that would in turn allow you to find information about g. But the biggest thing is, is that you need to know that they are inverses. It cannot be implied unless it is stated. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, we just talked about this, and it said you need to recall that algebraically inverses are obtained by interchanging the x and the y. Okay, so graphically, um, inverses are reflected across the line y equals x. Basically, you can fold a piece of paper on the line y equals x, which is a line that goes through the origin with a slope of 1, and they would be mirror images. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, in the figure that you're given, uh, you have a graph, and I'll get to it in just a second, that is reflected about the line y equals x. So we obtain the inverse graph of f. Okay. And um, with this stated, if you have the point a, b on f, then f's inverse we'll have the point BA, which is what someone stated. You switch the X and the Y. Okay, and this is for the inverse. All right. So what they're saying is, if we are looking for the slope, so I'm looking up here. If we know that we have the point AB for our function F, and F prime of A is found by finding the change in Y over the change in X, if you switch x and y, then the slope of the inverse, okay, the slope of the inverse is going to be located at point B, which is now the x value, by flipping the slope over. So it's just going to be the change in x over the change in y. It is not the negative reciprocal. Can someone tell me why? Not the negative reciprocal. What's the negative reciprocal? Oh, perpendicular not inverse. Does everyone understand the difference? Okay, so this statement right here is really, really important. If you are given some point AB as a point on F, okay, then in the same breath you are told that G is the inverse of F, okay, F prime of A is equal to some given value M. Okay, this is a lot of letters. Then G prime at B is the reciprocal. Okay, what? Basically what they're saying is if you know some information about function F and you know that F and G are inverses of each other and you can find the slope of F, you can find the slope of G. They're just reciprocals. But you might have to work something out. You may have to find the slope. You may have to do some mathematical operations. Okay, so a couple things. Here you have your line of reflection. I'm going to try to draw this as straight as I can. Sweet. This is the line y is equal to x. Okay. Then you have some given curve here and the tangent line on this curve. So it's very light, but it's right here. Okay. And this right here is f. To find the slope of this tangent line, it is dy over dx. We know that. dy dx is the derivative which represents the slope. Okay, so this is the change in y over the change in x. Then you are told that you have some given inverse. They're labeling it f to the negative 1 prime. This would be the same thing when I called it g. But basically what happens is the x and the y switch. So now what you have is the rise over run becomes dx over dy, which is the change in x over the change in y. But this is only for the inverse. And this notation right here represents the inverse. OK? So how is this going to help me, having all this information? What does it do for me? OK, does everybody have all this? So see, this took up over half a page. All right.
You are given f of 7 is equal to 1. Can someone just tell me what that means? f of 7 is equal to 1. Exactly. On the f graph, whatever it is, I have the point 7 comma 1. I'm just saying, I'm just rewriting it so that it looks familiar to me. What does f prime of 7 equal 5 mean? The slope at 7, right, is equal to 5. So this is my slope of f. Okay. Then it says that g is the inverse of f. What is g prime of 1? So first of all, if f and g are inverses, what is the ordered pair of g? It is 1, 7. So now does it make sense that they can ask us for g prime of 1? Okay. So if we know that the slope of f, f prime of 7 is equal to 5, because these two are inverses of each other based on the rule, it is the reciprocal that will give us g's slope, which is what? One fifth. Make sense? Okay. So, as you know, on certain, let's say the SATs, ACTs, PSATs, APs, whatever, okay, a bunch of letters, you are sometimes given in the problem um, miscellaneous information, right? So it is your job when you are reading these problems to pull out the information that you need. And I'm giving you an example right here. So it says given f of negative 2 is equal to 5, you have f prime of negative 2 is equal to 6, and f prime of 5 is equal to negative 3. g is the inverse of f. What is g prime of 5? Okay, there's a lot of letters and a lot of numbers in there. So what I'm going to write first is what I recognize. Here I have the point of f is negative 2, 5. So that means I have g, which is what point? 5, negative 2. Okay, remember, these two are inverses. So then, the next part of it says that f prime of negative 2 is equal to 6. What does that mean? The slope at negative 2 for f is equal to 6. Does that relate to this point? Just a yes or no? Yes. f prime of negative 2 is equal to 6. This is my slope. f prime of 5 is equal to negative 3. F prime of five. Do I have a point at five comma something? For f? I uh, no, I do not. I have it for g, but this says f. Do I need this? No. This is a slope at another point somewhere on the graph that I know nothing about. Does everyone see what I'm saying? So I don't need this. Then it says, what is g prime of five? This was meant to throw me off. G prime of 5 relates to this, true? Which then in turn is the inverse of this. So what is G prime of 5? 1 over 6. You have to be careful because it is intended to throw you off. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Yes. 